Here are the horoscopes from the 15th to 21st of August 2016. We begin the week with Saturn turning direct in Sagittarius and Saturn will no longer be going back into Scorpio so we're well out of that phase now but as Saturn goes direct in Sagittarius we'll feel a surge of truth and structure coming through from all that we've learnt especially since January. So looking back over the last eight months, what's the journey been? Part of that has been in Scorpio, which has been digging in to the deep subconscious, meeting our demons, facing our fears, and having them shown to us from the outside so that we can actually realise them and bring them to light. So the job of Scorpio is to bring what is in the dark out to light, and that especially works with the subconscious, but also with the collective as well. So now we're direct in Sagittarius and this will go all the way through to March next year when we get another retrograde right the way through to December. So this is a long haul, this isn't a sprint, this is something to engage with, it's like a course of study, a degree course. Because Saturn is the teacher and the pupil, so by learning our lessons we become masters. So we have a rest of the year of mastery ahead, structure, incisiveness, getting straight to the point and doing the research so that we're well informed. This year so far we've seen a lot lack of information really, especially with something like the Brexit, Britain leaving the EU. There were a lot of opinions made very, very quickly and an overwhelming lack of information on the subject. So maybe we can learn from that, maybe we can learn to do some research to actually look all around a subject and to make an informed opinion before we jump to a conclusion or get whooshed away by the media frenzy of fear. But that's just one example. We have the US elections and I'm sure there's many other political activities that are going on around the world. But now we should be able to be a bit stronger to actually find the information and to put it to good use. There's a lot of energy in Earth this week. We have Venus, Mercury and Jupiter all in Virgo. And that's a wonderful combination because we have the heart, intelligence, then we have the mind, inspiration, and we have Jupiter, the expander, all in the sign of Virgo. And Virgo likes to look at all the small details and see how it adds up to the bigger picture. In the body, Virgo is represented by the digestive system, so this is where we take all the little bits and we break them down and digest them, eliminating anything that's not serving us and taking the nourishment from what is. But also, Virgo rules the nervous system and it has a very acute intelligence involved in that. It's almost fibrous, there's a texture to it. So this is a great opportunity with Venus, Mercury and Jupiter all in Virgo this week to listen to your body intelligence, to listen to the mind-body connection, your thoughts and what they're saying to you. Because later next month as we approach the autumn equinox, that's a great time of recalibration as we go from the summer to the winter and making those necessary changes in our bodies as well. Virgo likes to plan ahead. So there's a feeling of plans coming into formation. They've come from the Pisces realm of the imagination and dreaming and now they're starting to become possible as we plan the year ahead. So we've gone back into the heart to see what really matters to us and now we've got an opportunity to put that into actual productivity, especially as we go into next month. But the big story this week, Aquarius full moon. So this is a very big full moon. We've got Aquarius in the fifth house, which is a house of simple joy, intelligent joy. So finding that inner spark, finding what fires us up, finding what we would love to be able to do with ourselves and be with ourselves to actually contribute, to hold a vision and to hold it very deep within with excitement. Aquarius teaches us that our heart is a transmitter-receiver. That's what those zigzags are on one level of the symbol. Transmit and receive across the electromagnetic universe. So there's a sense of excitement coming in by the end of the week to really get to the purity of what makes us vibrate, what we're transmitting and what we're able to receive. But with that excitement, it's because it really matters to us, not just to us, but to what it's contributing to the growth of consciousness at this time. So by Thursday, Friday, we've got the moon in Aquarius and it's not necessarily a good one for deep sleep. It's full of ideas, it's buzzing with electricity and ingenuity. 
So it might be a good idea to keep a pen and paper handy and to actually record some of that inspiration, maybe even a few flashes of genius as they come through so that we can remember them and stay vibed by them going forwards into the future. Aquarius is about setting a high vibration. We do not have to constantly just be ruled by the collective field, so stepping up and over that. And one way to do that is to think of empowerment, but also to look at yourself over multi-lifetimes. This is not just a race from start to finish in this life. You're not separate. You're actually here on part of a multi-life continuum. And a good question to ask at this time is, what did I come here to do and be in this time? So there's a sense of contribution, there's a sense of the group, and there's a sense of being individual, but adding to the changes that are going on right now. Then by the weekend we have the moon meeting Neptune in Pisces, so here comes the sleep, here comes the dreaming, here comes the going deep into the soul knowledge of what we've learnt. Taking the ideas that become knowledge, the knowledge that becomes wisdom, and the wisdom when lived becomes mastery. So a very high note to the end of the week if we've been still long enough to listen and we've actually tuned into the higher vibration, we've considered a higher perspective and a larger perspective of contribution to this age rather than just what we're doing in our own lives, then by the weekend that soulful tone comes in and we can start to feel and we can start to be what it is that we know that we're here for. So all told, quite a mellow week, quite an inward week. We still have the sun and the big gorgeous sign of Leo. We still hopefully have the warm weather. We have the opportunity to slow down, to watch our thoughts, to see where our plans are unfolding from the heart, from the excitement place, and to get back to the root frequency of anything that does excite us, because that's where we need to be stepping out from every day so that we're following our highest joy. So those are the horoscopes for this week, and I'll see you next week. If you'd like to engage with Saturn in Sagittarius for the rest of the year and into 2017, then embarking on a study of astrology is very, very appropriate. Sagittarians are able to see far and travel far, and Saturn brings the learning and the structure necessary. So I have a one to three year degree course you're very welcome to come and take part in. And that's comprised of 13 modules of video and notes to follow along with and membership to my online group for discussion and questions. If you'd like to explore your chart then I'm available over Skype and in person one to one for a reading. And I also have my online courses which is astrology, tarot and feng shui and learning the lunar cycles as well. So those are one-off courses that you can take and explore in your own time. And like I say, the membership group is a wonderful place if you want to learn slowly, if you want to walk the path. So you don't have to be a Facebook person. You can set up a private Facebook profile, come and join us, ask questions, see where the energies are happening for you and explore other interesting topics in a warm and friendly environment. So for any of that, please do contact me, zoehines7 at gmail.com.